Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, March 27th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, March 28th. Thursday will be the last trading day of the week, of the month, and of the quarter. So we see a whole lot of coming together as far as dates are concerned. The markets will be closed on Friday in observance of Good Friday. And we're going to get some economic reports. And I'll go through that a little bit later. But I was seeing a contradiction in some of the sources that I look at to get the economic reports that are due out. And I think I have it cleared up. So I'll deal with that later on. But in Wednesday's session, we saw more of a broad market participation to the upside. It was later in the day. Stocks really showed some strength. We're seeing a lot of an improvement across the whole market. We didn't see as much strength in the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. And the Magnificent Seven weren't really all that strong in Wednesday's session. But we are seeing a lot of stocks that have been lagging behind a little bit, showing a little bit more strength. Now, some of this could be what they call window dressing. As we're getting ready to end the quarter, and quarterly reports are going to have to go out from money managers and mutual funds and so forth. And they want it to look as good as possible. So there's a little bit of buying and selling and maneuvering that goes on to try to make their reports look a little bit better. First note that I do have a video that's posted on the YouTube channel talking about the proposed idea for my program that I'm hoping to launch in June. I will be adding to that with other videos. I have a number of them kind of planned out here to give you an overall idea of my vision for the program and what it can offer you and so forth. So let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we did have a higher open. The futures were fairly strong right off the bat. We were above R1 at 52.25. So we're getting back further above that 5,200 level, which kind of came into play on Tuesday. We didn't quite get down to that level, but we were close. But what's very common when we see a positive open, we see an attempt to fill the gap or at least pull back right after the open, as there are a few folks that are squaring up positions and looking to sell into strength. We fell back down and found support at the daily pivot at 52.15, and that's a pretty important level as well. We were able to maintain that support level. As the day went on, we chopped between the daily pivot and R1. And then later in the day, there was a breakout. And we saw prices close above R2 at 52.46. We were up 0.86% on a percentage basis. And we were still below average with volume, though. We are positive with our technicals. Now, there, again, as I constantly try to mention we're looking extreme positive that's the, the negative side of things and that's usually what we look at when we're in more of a downtrend and we bounce from that and we get to an overbought condition and then we turn and go back down well when we're in a more positive backdrop we can get to an ex overextended reading to the upside and just stay there and so we look at that more as good momentum that's coming into the market inflation and interest rates the market's still concerned about the strong CPI and PPI report that came out week before last. Now, we're supposed to get the PCE report on Friday when the market's closed. Also, Jerome Powell's going to be giving a speech when the market's closed. And so if you ever watch the futures prices over the weekend, which I do, they open Sunday afternoon at a on the West Coast, and that would be in the evening on the East Coast, about 6 p.m. or so, East Coast time. I go to a site called investing.com, and you can see the S&P and Dow futures there. That'll be the first chance that the market will have to react to the economic reports as well as Jerome Powell's speech. So if that's something that you like to do, I can easily put a link or send me a message or an email or something if you don't watch this now. I, I watch it all the time, even when the market's closed. So just to get a feel for what's actually happening. All right. 
Some comments that we can make. The S&P, as well as some other indexes, did set a new all-time high. We saw a good solid day from the small caps. We're still in that range. We're at the higher end of that range now. But small caps had a pretty good day. We have our short-term list of those things that are looking extreme positive. A new addition is the 20-period exponential moving average. The Williams percent are the CCI 20. The 14 is not there quite yet. And the stochastics. Intermediate term, a little bit longer list with the 50 period exponential moving average. We're getting up into that plus three channel with our standard deviations chart, just because we saw that spike up near the end of the day. The rate of change going back 50 periods, just barely, just starting to cross the line there. The oscillators are still looking extreme and kind of shifting back a little bit more positive now. The Sean Trend Meter, the bullish percent index, the boom indicator based on 50 periods, not the 20. That's the short term. The 50 is the more intermediate term. And we're getting a little far away from that moving average. And then this has been on the list for quite a while. The 10 period new high, new low study for the S&P. Long term, our exponential moving average based on 200 periods, that's been added back to the list where the simple moving averages based on 150 and 200, they've been on the list for a long time. This is the scenario, and it doesn't seem to be changing for right now. The Fed is likely done raising rates and looks to cut rates possibly three times in 2024. Now, there was a Fed governor that spoke, I believe it was Wednesday evening, that said, we're not in any hurry. Uh, you know, things are looking okay. We may not be willing to cut rates just as fast as the market wants it to. But that's not the Fed governor. What The market's really going to be paying attention to what Jerome Powell says in a speech on Friday and to see if they get any clues as to what may be happening. But for right now, the market is going with the scenario that we have now adopted, and I've been going over here. The dollar was up and interest rates were down. We came down to 4.2% for the 10-year yield. That helped give support to stocks. We are still inverted with the yield curves. Sentiment did go up with the positive day. We closed at 70 where we had been at 67. So we're, we're going back up now. So the context is switching back to more of a positive upward move. And we're not at that 75 level at least yet. Our trend is still positive. The ADX really isn't changing all that much. It's really chopping around. So we're still below the moving average, but the ADX is above 20. And I should have changed this. The bias should be positive. And the momentum mixed to positive. We still have seen three down days and then one up day. I would keep that at mixed, but the bias could be changed over to positive. That's usually if we have an up day or a down day. We only had the weekly MBA Mortgage Applications Index. I like to keep an eye on this, and it's a, a weekly report, so we can kind of get a feel for what's happening in the housing market. Where it was down 0.7%, we were down 2% with purchase applications and down 0.2% with refinance applications. And as interest rates are going back up, that probably put some pressure on the mortgage applications. Here's a chart showing how we have seen the last two weeks where the, it has been negative, but it was less negative this past week than it was the week before. Some interesting charts to show you here. This is real S&P 500 percent deviation from exponential growth trend. This tries to measure it where if we're above this line, we're above the, the trend. If we go below this, it's, it's more of a detrended type of chart that we have here. And we're over on the right, we're starting to get kind of far away from this middle line here. And other times when we did get far away, that usually meant the top of something. Now, we could still go up further. We don't really know what will happen. But sometimes when valuations get out of hand, the market will use that to justify pulling back. Also, this is another chart similar to some that I've been showing this past week. This is going back uh, quite a while here, and then it's matching up other time periods with what's happening right now. This is the S&P 500 rallies from 2009, 1974, 1942. Of course, all of you remember that one. Generational lows, and then this is an overlay chart just to try to get some 
to see if things are behaving the same way. Now, there are some people that highly, highly, highly believe in this. And I do to a degree. I think, you know, there's the idea that history repeats itself. And then there's the added take on that, that, well, it may not repeat itself exactly, but it might rhyme. And that's why we use technical analysis, because those things that happened before tend to happen again when you're seeing the same kinds of things. And there's some truth to that. My personal take is I think some folks take this to too far of a degree. We That's why I use a lot of different charts and indicators to reach a consensus saying, OK, this is where we're at right now. And since we're using historical data, we have to look back and see what's already happened and then compare it with what's happening now. I'm just I, I just think folks get a little too focused on this for my take but that's just where i come out but you may want to look at this and just see if we are in fact following the same patterns from previous times then that's looking quite good going into the future and this is ism manufacturing and i have to raise lower this here i've you don't see it but there's a bar that goes across this when i'm recording it and it blocks out some of the words ISM manufacturing has historically been a timely and reliable indicator of cyclical growth, but a large cap has opened up recently relative to GDP growth. This is comparing ISM, which we'll be getting that soon. We had it a few weeks ago. And this is real GDP, which this is one of the reports that's going to be coming out on Thursday. It's the, the, the next estimate, the third estimate. And they have this going down slightly. It's still positive, but it is going down based on the Atlanta Fed now, GDP now. And I go over that in the weekly video. And then ISM, which is still below 50, showing a contraction. So we'll be seeing if something will improve there. And there tends to be a pretty strong correlation between these two charts. They're now kind of far apart from each other. So is ISM going to turn and go up or is GDP going to come down? Okay, then we're looking at small cap forward PE, and this is coming right up. And this is similar to some other charts that I show throughout the week. We're just about at that 15 level right now with the Russell 2000. These are the small caps showing that they're fairly priced for the time being, but they're not necessarily expensive. They've been really lagging behind the small caps. They're the, the holdout right now as far as the index that has not set an all-time high where we have all the other indexes, at least that I follow, that are setting all-time highs. And then Morgan Stanley Global Risk Demand Index, or GERDI, I guess you could say. It, we're getting kind of greedy here. This is more of a global-based sentiment indicator that Morgan Stanley came up with. And something just to be aware of here, where folks are getting a little too optimistic about things, according to this chart. And some interesting things that I found on Twitter this is also put up by Sentiment Trader, and here's the tweet where it says, any single economic indicator has only a certain amount of utility as it relates to the stock market. And that's why we look at lots of different charts. And then there's this person, Jay Capel, all right, his recent analysis, and people sit around and think this stuff up, really. It combines heavy truck sales and housing permits. Okay, now we look at a chart where we look at heavy truck sales and GDP, as well as the S&P 500, but somehow somebody came up with the idea, this J came up with this, where you compare heavy truck sales and housing permits. And there is some logic to that, but remember there is stock market logic and then there's human logic. And just measuring the different aspects of the economy to get a broader picture. And so we have the black line, which are heavy truck sales, which have been seeing an improvement. And then there's a 26-month exponential moving average, which has us actually going down just a little bit. Okay. All right. Thought it might be interesting. And then this could impact the dollar, which could impact stocks. And the, the yen, the Japanese yen, has been in a real solid downtrend compared to the dollar. And I go over that in the intermarket analysis video. It's getting up to a, a level where we got to this level back in 2022 and that's when the Japanese government stepped in and started buying yen like crazy and that pushed the price of the yen up and the dollar down well we're getting back around to these levels again 
And we're wondering, is that same th kind of thing going to happen? Now, that could end up being positive for stocks, because if the Japanese government buys yen, that pushes the dollar down. The stock market likes a weaker dollar, and that tends to help the stock market. Or we could just keep going up. And because we're seeing a shift in Japanese fiscal policy right now, they they may not decide to come in or they may decide not to come in and do any intervention. Then this is Jeffrey Hirsch looking at, OK, we're coming up close to Good Friday. What does it look like? Well, here's the S&P. And then three days, two days before and then the day before and because I didn't see this chart until later, we just have the one day. We tend to be positive on the day before Good Friday, but then the day after Good Friday, which is not Saturday, okay, it'll be Monday, we do see some seasonal weakness, and, and that'll be the first day of April, which sometimes the first day of the month can be positive. So we have some different forces playing with each other here. Where in his tweet, he says the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ and the Russell historically have solid days ahead of Good Friday. And here's the average return for the S&P. We're up 0.9%. So all of them look pretty good. Little optimistic buying going ahead of Easter weekend. And then this is a chart that I have been showing. This is not a new screen chart, screenshot. This is the same chart that I showed yesterday where this is a, almost a week old now where we were hitting a new all-time high with the S&P and it looked like we were going to be chopping sideways. We were drifting lower, but now we're starting to go back up into the higher end. Even though we did set another new all-time high with the S&P, it looks like we might be choppy to slightly down as we go out, go throughout the month of April. And then we, according to this, these cycles, we might see some weakness near the latter part of May. Here's our intraday chart. And the futures were quite strong, and we that led to the gap higher open, and then we came down and tried to fill the gap. We came right down to the daily pivot, and this ended up providing support. And then we kind of bounced around, just kind of mingled between the daily pivot and R1. Later in the day, which this is when the professionals are closing the market, somebody came in, or a bunch of people, or a bunch of institutions came in, and they really started buying. That sent us up a above R2 and we closed at the high for the session. So it ended up being a pretty positive day. This is also showing the intraday chart where the futures had been stronger. Then we saw some selling into strength right after the market opened. Here is the move up going into the close. And then we were drifting off just a little bit in the initial overnight session. We did, this was mainly a day for value. So value did outperform growth in Wednesday's session where the red line is back above the blue line. So we didn't see an awful lot of an improvement there. And we also came down with our S&P growth to value ratio intraday where we went lower. It was value that was going up. So growth was actually going down. So now we're more near the bottom part of this range. The end of day chart where we were up with growth, but we were up a lot more with value. We were also up, but up less with the mid caps and up and up quite a bit less with the small caps. But you can see value just had a really solid day across all the different indexes. And so we came down with the growth to value ratio for the small caps, even though we're still positive, we're kind of breaking below this sideways range. We also came down with the mid caps and coming down to this close to this previous low, we also came down with S&P growth to value. So a little bit of a concern there, but hey, we're setting all-time highs. It's more of a broad-based participation, and that can be taken as positive as well. And we turn back up just a little bit with discretionary to staples when we look at the ratio on the bottom. Both are in an uptrend, discretionary by itself and staples, but we want to see discretionary doing even better and outperforming staples. Large cap growth ended up not being all that changed. It was up 0.18%. So the, the big, big stocks really lagged behind, even though they were up. With our trend, we're falling a little bit below the moving average now. So even with the update, we really haven't shot back up. But we're still positive because the green line is on top, although it continues to decline. Intermediate term, trying to come above the moving average, but pretty much chopping sideways, and the green line is also on top. We are dropping off with volume, and we've been below volume all week, and probably will continue to be below volume ahead of the holiday. 
We did get the latest reading from the investors intelligence where it had been up over four. It came down. Now it's at 3.99. So it's still giving us a very high reading, showing that there's a lot of optimism in the market. The VIX did decline with the update with the line chart as well as the bar chart. And we're also getting very low readings with the VIX of the VIX, the volatility of the VIX. That's coming down to really, really low readings right now. We're still seeing kind of an extreme reading with the SKU index. And this could be ahead of a holiday weekend. We don't know if something really weird is going to happen or not, but... We're up into this red area, so even with the update, the market is still expecting some kind of a big move. We don't know if that's going to be to the upside or the downside. However, when we look at the VIX, the momentum is now going lower. So as stocks have been going up, the general momentum of the VIX has been going down. And we ticked up, and this is just to kind of contradict that a little bit. We're actually up a little with the equity put call ratio, so we're actually continuing to go down with the five period. And I think I forgot to change that on the slide later. Not really getting any extreme readings now with the volatility risk premium. We're pretty much in this band that we've been in for the last few sessions. Advanced decline line, yeah, we saw a real thrust up based on price and volume. So we're turning back up with price and volume here. And this is looking very healthy. We did see an expansion of new highs, not above where we were before. But we're pretty much pegged at the top now with our five period. And this indicator can't go any higher than it already is. And we're pretty much flat now with the 10 period. We're going to need to see some follow through for this to turn more positive. We're still looking good when we look at the advanced decline ratio. We're still setting a series of higher lows here, showing the volume. And most of the readings that we've been getting for 2024 have been above zero. So that's also positive. Accumulation distribution is showing some improvement. We had dropped below the moving average. Now we're coming back up to the moving average. But we're still not really seeing a lot of improvement here with the chicken money flow. We went negative after Monday. We continue to be negative now. And this chart just didn't show much of an improvement. And we ticked up a little bit with the chicken oscillator, but we're still below zero. And I wanted to show some advanced decline line studies here that I haven't shown for a few days. We were looking really solid here with the cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE. We're also coming back up with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE. We're not quite breaking out yet, but showing some improvement. Same thing here with a different calculation of the advanced decline line. We're just a little bit above this previous high, but showing some improvement along the way here. This is S&P cumulative, um, the accumulation based on price where we're not quite breaking out above this previous reading, but we are breaking out based on volume. And, and personally, I think this is more positive. To see volume leading price could end up being a good thing. When we look at our advanced decline line studies, we are going up with the NYSE common stock. We're turning up, but haven't broken out with the S&P, showing some improvement with the mid caps and still showing some improvement with the small caps, but not necessarily breaking out. Here's our daily chart. Where we will be coming into April now, we're above this pivot point. This had been providing support. We we kind of stalled out right below this pivot point. So that's providing overhead resistance. But we're still above this short-term pivot point here. We were able to hang on to that. And on the bottom, we are below average with volume. And then I, the next two charts are kind of measuring the same type of thing. This is one day from... Wednesday to Thursday, excuse me, th Tuesday to Wednesday, this is the S&P advanced decline percent where maybe we kind of overdid it a little bit. And then this is the advanced decline ratio, also showing that we possibly overdid it on a one day basis. The Williams percent R is coming back up and looking extreme positive. The CCI 20, even though it had been coming down, it did turn back up and is extreme positive. We want to keep an eye on the 20 period moving averages just in case we start to see some weakness. It's positive right now since price is above both lines. We're really just watching this in case we see more of a aggressive pullback. We're starting to get extreme with the 20, 50, and now 200 period exponential moving averages. And these moving averages are based on just the price of the S&P itself. It's not looking inside of the S&P. The force index did bounce back up above its midpoint. So that's showing some improvement. 
We're looking extreme positive in the short term with the stochastics, turning back up, but not extreme in the intermediate term. We still remain extreme positive in the long short term. And pretty much since we saw that big run up at the end of October into November, we've been extreme positive with the longer term stochastics. And this is also showing good momentum. We're getting up just barely into the plus three channel with our standard deviations chart, meaning that we may have gone up a little too far too fast. Intermediate term, we're still declining with the balance of power. It's picking up something negative and doesn't quite like what it's seeing. I wanted to show this again. This is the double and triple exponential moving average based on 50 periods. After Tuesday, we had fallen a little bit below the blue line, which is the double. Well, we came right back up and we're at the underside of the triple and the triple moves faster. So if we can continue to see some strength and get back above this, that will help keep the red line above the blue line, which shows good momentum. And we still remain darker blue with the go, no go bars. We're also looking good with the highest high value above an advancing midpoint. The TTM squeeze is turning back to a lighter shade of blue, so that's switching back to looking more positive. And we're not necessarily extreme with the boom indicator with the 20 period. This measures how far away is price from a particular moving average. We're not too far away from the 20, but we are getting a little far away from the 50. We're still showing improvement when we measure the distance away from the 200 period moving average. And the rate of change just barely coming up into this 10 area now. And I drew this red line on here. There's nothing magical about it. It's just a lot of times when we get to this kind of a reading, it might look a little extreme positive. The ease of movement actually declined, but we're still above zero. Didn't see any change in the Arun indicator. It's been going flat and it's still remaining positive. We did cross back above zero with the S&P McClellan oscillator. So that's turning things a bit more positive. So we're trying to turn back up based on price and we continue to go up based on volume. And right now it looks like volume is outperforming and that could be a healthy sign. We're also going back above zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So that will turn the summation index a little more positive where we've been kind of chopping around as the market's been bouncing. And we're also continuing to go up based on volume. We're actually continuing to decline with the Swinland Trading Oscillator based on price and volume. However, they are still both above zero, so they're both positive. And our oscillators, they're not really quite sure what to do. They've been extreme positive for pretty much all of 2024. We're declining below the moving average based on price, but we're above the moving average based on volume. We saw a bit of an improvement with the PMOs that are rising. We're turning back up with the buy signals. We're turning back up with the PMOs that are above zero and also starting to look extreme again. We've switched over to positive from being neutral with the elders impulse system for the S&P. We're positive with the parabolic SAR. We're flattening out here with the slope oscillator. And we're pretty much right on top of the moving average with the MACD. So our oscillators, they're just really mixed up right now. So they're just flatlining as we look at the short and intermediate term. And even the long term are looking a little more negative with the KST. But we're, we're, we've been chopping an awful lot lately. And oscillators like more of a trending environment. We're still above all the plotted moving averages on our moving average tree. The bullish percent index didn't really break out, but it didn't break down either. So we're still looking more positive here. We're above 70, and that's extreme. But the fact that we went up just a little bit is positive. And we ticked down just barely after climbing with the NYSE bullish percent index. This is a little bit negative. We actually declined with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index as some of the mega caps didn't really have a very good day. The money flow continues to be below 50. That's negative. But the ultimate oscillator is turning back up and is above 50. That's positive. And the vortex continues to drop off. It's still positive with the green line on top, but it's not showing an awful lot of strength. RSI turning back up based on 14 and 9 periods. And all of the readings going back to November have pretty much been above 50, both with the 14 period and we had a little bit of a drop here with the 9 period. But other than that, all the readings have been about 50, showing good solid momentum. We're still above an advancing moving average with on balance volume. We're starting to get extreme and showing some improvement here with the stocks inside the S&P above their 20 period moving averages. And we're also showing some improvement with those stocks above their 50 period moving averages. 
And we're still looking solid with those stocks above their 100 period moving averages and their 200 period moving averages. And this is getting kind of extreme, but at the same time could suggest good momentum. The copy curve, flatlining right now. Not sure if it wants to go positive or negative. The Sean trend meter is turning back up and is looking extreme positive. We're switching back to looking more positive based on trend with the hike in Ashi. It has an open candle after kind of giving us some doji black candles for a few days. We're turning back up with the Kegi chart, so that's looking more positive. The Renko chart never did turn negative, and the three-line break is still looking positive. We're coming back up to the underside of this blue trend line here, which is a little bit longer term trend line. The red line was when we were really going up, going up quickly. Well, the blue line is when we started to slow down just a little bit. And we're just at the underside of this trend line. We're still above this resistance level, which the longer we stay above this, the more we may call this support if we start to see a decline. But this is showing good solid momentum in the bigger picture. We're still looking extreme with the 150 and 200 and continuing to turn up. And we're still still solid across the board and all different time frames and indexes with the Keller market model. We switch back to looking more negative with the PMO, and that still remains negative for right now. But all the trend models with the decision point scorecard still remain positive. And we saw a little bit positive, a little bit negative. Boy, Canada just having a really good time these days. Nothing all that major here. The utilities, which have been under pressure, they're actually dropping below 50 with their BPI. And the NASDAQ was first it crossed above, then it went above, went below. We just didn't see a lot of strength in the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ in Wednesday's session. So the equal weight is actually going a little bit above the S&P weighted index right now since it outperformed. And we're really coming down with this ratio. We were down almost three quarters of a percent, meaning that the broad market outperformed the mega caps. We are coming back above this pivot level with the Dow. So we're regaining this support level again. And we've switched over to positive with the diamonds when looking at the elders impulse system. This is hard to read. Hopefully it'll clear up once we get into April. We're coming right up to this pivot point here with the NASDAQ. And it was up, but only half a percent. So it was still an up day, but it did underperform. And, and this may be providing some overhead resistance. We're also coming back up to this pivot point here where the NASDAQ 100 was up 0.39%. So just didn't really participate as much. We still remain neutral with the QQQs when looking at the elders impulse system. The momentum still continues to be negative. We haven't been able to really cross above the moving average and both of them are still continuing to decline. But when you look at the chart of the QQQs, we're still above the 20 period moving average. So that's holding up for right now. The small caps were up and they hit this pivot point and pretty much topped out at that point. They're not necessarily breaking out though. This is, we haven't been able to get back to this previous high that was set back in November. We've just been chopping around and we'll have to see, are we going to be able to see some follow through to the upside? Are we going to give some of these gains back? It's been very frustrating to deal with the small caps. Looking a little more positive with the Elder's Impulse system when looking at the small caps. It's now positive. And the Russell showing a little bit of an improvement, but still have not been able to break out above this intraday high that we set here. We did on a closing basis, and we closed near the high. And that's usually a positive thing, but we're not exceeding the intraday high that was set here. The RSI is above 50 and advancing. We're in a longer term uptrend. We're trying to turn back up with the momentum. The mid caps also were able to break above this pivot point. So that is positive. But they've been showing more strength. And they're turning back over to positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid caps. Apple is still in a downtrend, even though it was up over 2%. Did see a nice little bounce. Tesla was up over a percent, but it's also in a downtrend. And NVIDIA was down, <clears throat> even though it's in an uptrend, but it was down 2.5%. And that was weighing on some of the mega caps. The FANG index is still pretty much chopping along sideways, even though it's in a longer term uptrend. And we're just kind of at the higher end of this sideways pattern that we've been in. Financial sector was up over a percent. And the regional banks, I, I haven't been showing those in the daily videos 
I'll go through that in the intermarket analysis video. They, even though they were downgraded by one of the outfits out there, they had a real solid day anyway. It makes them feel really good. The dollar is getting above the moving averages and starting to continue with a golden cross. And when we look at the S&P and compare it with the world indexes, we're seeing a little bit of an improvement with the short-term correlation and more of a gradual improvement with the longer-term correlation. We were down with the 10-year yield. We came down to the 50-period moving average, and we are breaking out above the 50-period moving average based on price. And then looking at growth of value, not seeing a lot of improvement here. The Qs actually underperformed the S&P, so we're still declining below a declining moving average. Saw a little bit of an improvement with discretionary to the S&P, but we're still below a declining moving average and large cap growth underperformed large cap value. So the large caps, mid caps, and small caps all underperformed on a ratio basis. We're still positive when we look at the five period moving average of the highs minus the lows across the broad market. And this is showing an improvement, which is solid for the market. We're still extreme positive with our 10 day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. So what's our outlook for Thursday? The markets will be closed on Friday for Good Friday. Thursday will be the last trading day of the week, month, and quarter. So this, this is not really like an options expiration, but there could be some maneuvering going on. Our technicals are positive and showing some improvement. Now, there are still some weak areas that we want to be aware of, but to have more of a broad-based participation, that's just showing a more healthy market environment. And we're not really sure <clears throat> what's happening right now with seasonality. We're going to get weekly jobless claims, the GDP third estimate, <clears throat> excuse me here, which may be a non-event because this is the third time we're seeing this same report. Unless it comes in drastically different than the other reports we've already seen, it may not have much of an impact. Consumer sentiment will be coming out. We usually get that on Friday. It'll be coming out on Thursday. Pending home sales will also be coming out. And then we want to keep an eye on geopolitical events. It's also a very, it's a, even though it's Easter, it's a holiday weekend and just want to be aware of geopolitical things that can happen, especially in the Middle East. And then this is where I'm seeing kind of a change. The market's going to be closed on Friday, but we're still going to get the PCE report coming out and the core PCE. So that's going to be an interesting thing that usually doesn't happen. And that's what we're seeing here. Here's Thursday with GDP and all the things that I've talked about. We'll also get the Chicago PMI. And then Friday, we are going to get PCE. The, the problem that I ran into is I go to briefing.com. That's where I get my economic calendar. And I've done that for a long time. And they're usually fairly correct. But then somebody was making some posts talking about what's coming out on Friday. And so I, I went to five different websites. And every one of them was different than briefing.com. So I guess we're getting some reports on Friday. Seasonally, we're kind of across the board here when it comes to March 28th. We're negative with the Dow, neutral to negative with the S&P, and neutral to positive when we look at the NASDAQ. And then we'll be on the last trading day of the month where we do see a little bit of positive seasonality with an election year with the green dashed line. Then just to give you a little foretaste, this is April's calendar where we tend to see some upward move for the S&P over the first few trading days. Then we tend to go a little bit sideways. If we see any weakness, it's right around the middle part of the month. And then we tend to finish the month off a little bit better than we started with the end ending up being rather negative seasonally. And we're just kind of wondering what's happened here. We've really deviated away from what historically has happened seasonally. And you can see that here, where the green line is continuing to go up. The black line is the seasonal pattern that we've been following, and they're really far apart from each other. This is also showing how we're far apart from what has typically happened. Thursday tends to be one of the more positive days of the week. We're not going to be open on Friday. So this typically in 2023 was a positive day. And then we're coming into the latter part of March, where according to Tom Bowley, we do see some positive seasonality here. This is also looking out into April, where if we go since 1950, that's this yellow bar here, and that's positive. The past 20 years is blue. That's been the most positive. 
the green of the past 10 years and then the dark blue or black, however you you see it, that's during an election year. However you measure this, April tends to be a historically strong month. So what are our warning signs? The equity put call ratio is still going up. It's actually starting to turn down now. I didn't change that. The check in money flow, the check in oscillator, and the money flow index, they've all turned negative. And even with the up move that we saw on Wednesday, they're still negative for right now. The copy curve is right on top of its moving average, and I'm counting it as negative. The S&P, it, it's still below both of these shorter term trend lines, the red one and the blue one, but we're right at the underside of the blue one. And then we have our negative divergences that we want to keep an eye on. When we're going up, they're not as relevant. It's really when we're going down, when we pay more attention to those. And we're still negative with the momentum for the NASDAQ 100. And then we're wondering about seasonality. We're still positive with the parabolic SAR, the vortex, even though it's showing some weakness. Even though the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ is above 50, it did decline. Small and mid-cap growth, they're still positive, even though they pulled back on a ratio basis in Wednesday's session. Large-cap growth, even though it didn't really participate, is still looking strong. And the financial sector was up and is still looking positive. So our conclusion, we're positive, showing some improvement now where some weakness had been drifting in. And that weakness is still there, and the market may build upon that. But it's turning back to looking more positive since we saw more of a broad-based participation in Wednesday's session, and we don't know what's going to happen with seasonality right now. And that's pretty much what we're watching in the short term. We're still above this short-term resistance. We were able to get above that and stay above that. And then the longer-term resistance, based on the weekly chart, that's still boding well for the market. Intermediate term, we do have kind of a long list of overbought conditions but this could also suggest good momentum. We're also overbought in the long term, but we continue to be positive. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day. And I will be preparing the video since the market's closed. I'm still going to go ahead and prepare the daily video for Monday. So that'll be available a little bit earlier than usual. So have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.